Okay, uh, welcome again. Uh, so now we'll have a talk about the relationship between Debian and AppConf uh, with Stefan Zaccarioli and Holger Levson. Uh, please welcome them. So the, well, the, the background of this uh, session is basically the long outstanding issues, issue of how Debian, how actually DebConf relates to Debian. What is the relationship between the money of the two projects, the organization of the two initiatives, and all this kind of stuff. And it is an issue that is been raised again like one month or, bef or two months before this, this DebConf. And not having a clear answer to that kind of make some kind of relationship difficult, like knowing whether DebConf has the right, between quotes, of asking the over, um, what, what's the name of the, the money remaining from previous year at the beginning of the DebConf release cycle or not, uh, what is the appropriateness of asking more money to Debian for DebConf, and all these kind of issues. So uh, I don't really have a specific agenda, I just have a personal position of mine which I'd like to share and then we can have a, a, an open discussion and hopefully reach a proposal on how should be the relationship of the two, the two initiative and hopefully propose it on DebConf team and having it clarified and written down for future DebConfs. So my position on that is that DebConf and Debian are essentially the same project for the very simple reason that the sponsor, which give money to DebConf, give money to DebConf on the basis that DebConf helps Debian. So I think that having a non-official Debian conference will actually reduce significantly the money that DebConf gets. So for this reason, I like to think of the two initiatives have the same thing. That does not mean that this, the organization should not be separate because I mean, it's very, very useful to have DebConf team doing the conference organization and I think nobody else will be able to do as good job as them. So I just would like to clarify that DebConf exists because of Debian and to support Debian. So we, I don't like to think them as two separate entities. And the, the difficult part is how to manage money, of course. So in my opinion, DebConf should aim at being a amortized zero budget conference. That means that in the long run, it should be a self-sustainable conference where sponsor money are enough to run the conference. That does not mean that every single year the conference should be zero budget. It is completely normal that a conference in New York is more expensive than a conference in Argentina or anywhere else. So it's okay if one year we have money which remains at the end of the conference and the other year we, we need more money than what we have and in the long run we amortize that. So the difficult part, if we agree that DebConf and Debian are part of the same project, the difficult part is deciding a process of how uh, money are used, Debian money are used to support DebConf and like ask in the beginning and then return it back later on. So this is a difficult part. This, is, this, I believe, has been a problem this year because I have the impression that in the beginning, DebConf people thought that they could have asked whatever amount of money to Debian, while on my side, I was kind of scared that the, all the remaining $70,000 from past DebConf had been exhausted completely, and I was kind of worried that adding some more money to the, uh, on the table before not having some kind of guarantees. So this is my position, and I welcome comment on this. I don't know if, Holger, you want to add something? Um, I agree with what Stefano said. Um, I'd like to add that um, I don't think that there should be decisions taken at, at DebConf without the usual Debian processes, Absolutely. be it, yeah, without the usual processes. Um, and for this, um, Bob, I'd like to <coughs> define or talk about a process how we can um, reach our goals, which we define here, but they also should be discussed in future on the list or IRC or whatever. Um, I'd like also to talk about the goals of DebConf, like why are we doing this? Um, my personal view is getting people together because we work the whole year remotely and to, so getting together and know each other is an important part for me. 
and also for the technical discussions, share that with the rest of the project. We have 3,000 people working on Debian. I said on, read on one slide, and 300 are here, so 90% are not here. So I think the video team is also very important for this, and I should, should think that should be con, um, taken into account when doing the conference. And actually acknowledged in the goal of the conference, I believe. Yeah. Uh, who, who, who's that? I think it's best if the audience passes on the mic so that then yeah. only one, the person with the mic would speak. I, I'm sure we'll, <laughs> we'll say something at some point. So I just want to open by thanking the DebConf team for all of their great work over the years. Um, <laughs> and, and, and make it absolutely clear that you guys have done a wonderful job putting on a great conference year after year and it continues to amaze me uh, this experience, which is like no other conference that I'm aware of, that, that I've ever been to. Um, that said, I share some of these concerns about DebConf being a separate organization from Debian. Um, given that DebConf goes around asking organizations to donate funds in Debian's name, the organization should be directly accountable to Debian as a result, um, and it should be integrated into our decision-making structures within Debian. And I feel this very strongly, and I think it's a, it's a a very painful bug that we've not had that in place now for several years. Um, also, I, I do. Uh, I understand um, from from observing the the DebConf organization from the sidelines that uh, there tends to be a lot of intra-organizational uh, politics and and disagreements and those kinds of things, which. I think Debian has enough of those already for everyone, um, and if we could consolidate that, perhaps we could uh, um, make things run a little bit more smoothly, and, and, <laughs> and, and rather than having two organizations, each with their own sets of political problems. I just say, I disagree actually with the premise of the title of the book, which says, why is DebConf a fork? I think the actual question should be, why do people behave as if DebConf is a fork? I don't think it, it ever truly has been a fork. I don't think it is now. I, but I agree there's a lot of aspects of DebConf which are individually forked from the process in Debian. Some of those, I should say, just to say it's not, it's not all, in, it's not intentional things necessarily from DebConf people, because in some cases it's where the normal DebCon, normal Debian way of doing things or team for something have been kind of too quiet or non-existent, and therefore DebConf people have invented one. So in some cases, if there had been perhaps a more active, for example, the extreme case. If there was, if there was an extremely active Debian funding t fundraising team that had existed before DebConf, probably people wouldn't have thought of inventing a separate DebConf sponsorship team. I mean, you would just integrate it in. The same thing. If the pr Debian press team were, had always every year been active on things, you wouldn't think of inventing a DebConf press team. Um, but certainly, from my point of view, having too many, having sort of all this duplication of things, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I definitely agree that th everything. In, although I don't think it is a fork as such, I think merging together these aspects as much as possible makes absolute sense. I'd like to comment on the fork, because I set the title and realized today that the title is a bit wrong, because there were delegations in 2006 by AJ when he was DPL, so that was made clear, but it's, as you said, it's not perceived as such. We forgot about it, and the current DPL didn't know. <laughs> so that, that, that's true. I, I don't want to monopolize the microphone too much. I think Pablo is also waiting to talk, but I just wanted to respond to one thing regarding teams not being available to do, to do the work, and therefore there were other teams invented in parallel. So one place where I think this, there was not such a justification for, for creating separate structures and separate hierarchy is on the, um, the infrastructure side regarding, uh, so the devconf.org domain, for instance, is not registered to Debian. I, I don't, think on the infrastructure in general, it's because there's certain people who like playing with machines, which is... Again, not a negative reason, but not really a justifiable reason for duplicating the entire Debian infrastructure for DebConf. Not only duplicating, but without going into too much detail, what I've heard is that for this conference, the, the infrastructure meant that certain things were not getting done that should have been, that we should have been more flexible in regards to that. So, so is someone taking notes of this buff? Can someone do that? Anna, do, would you try? So. I kind of an action item on that. So do we have a list of what is forked and what is not? Because I confess that, okay, I'm pretty well aware of the Debian infrastructure and the Debian organization structure. There is a, there is a page which has the list of all the, in terms of the, the technical infrastructure, okay. a list of all the DebConf 
So what, what I was saying is that unfortunately I'm never been involved in DebConf Orga team besides being having been dragged in this year. So if some of someone of the Orga team is willing to do a list of what is actually forked and maybe providing a reason why it is they are for it would be good. I believe that some of the reasons were historical, and I believe maybe nowadays most of them can be you know merged back. Well, the first thing is uh, <clears throat> you become DPL and you become very concerned about the finance of DevConf, particularly you arrive in the right time at uh, the wrong time where we have such an expensive DevConf. But uh, I don't. I mean, to me, DevConf is an amortized conference. So you, you say the goal should be, but actually the goal is and has been. So I, after looking about the fundraising and the budgets and stuff of previous years, we, we are not running a gapping hole on our finances. I mean, we started with 70K from last year. That means an amortized thing right there. Well, yes, but OK, I give you my point of view on that. So first of all, from the outside, is not clear, not only to me, but to many people, is not clear that such a huge amount of Debian money were actually DebConf money. So I, when I become DPL, I look at the final state of uh, SPI, and I found there $120,000. OK, cool. Then a few months later, I look it again, and I found $50,000. So it's not that I'm cheap, but I, I, I get this situation and I get $20,000 more ask for DebConf. You can understand that it's kind of scary. Yeah, and but, but just, we... just a second. And it's not just me. So I've seen comment on IRC by many people saying, oh, look, Debian has, has less than half of the money he used to have a few months ago. Blame Zach. That, that's, that's actually the point. Because I'm on paper the responsible of Debian money, but I was not part at all of the decision. So I'm not a control freak at all. I just wanted to understand what was going on. And the fact that I didn't know about that, I'm sure, is kind of a good indicator that a lot of people in Debian, which are not involved in DebConf organization, a lot of those people were not aware either. Well, but that's independent of running an amortized question, just how to communicate to the rest. And having separate accounts actually will help them. I, th I think it's not <clears throat> not only this money thing. There's like the decision process for choosing a new venue, not venue, but um, location. That, that we have we have criteria what the place has to have network and people should must be able to sleep there. But who decides then? That is that is DebConf team. Who is DebConf team? Everybody on the mailing list on the IRC channel. This is not defined. It's it's also um, the prob the problem with each year having a local team. Um, which changes, which is very, very much responsible for making DebConf run. And usually the, the local team works as best as they can and they put very, very much effort in it. Um, but there are some things with, with the changes every year, they, they don't get the full picture how a conference must be run. If you start running a conference every year and you've never done it before, you might oversee some um, good, good things which, are need, which make the conference much better. For example, the time schedule here, was the, originally it was planned to have talks from the, from full hour to full hour with zero break, which then was communicated to the speakers that is bad for the video team. So it was five minute edit, and it's not only bad for the video team; it's also bad for the whole audience because it's better to be able to talk up about the talk, to go to the toilet, to do whatever, and that's not only what the video team needs to do, but everybody. So this, I try to communicate it three or four or five times before the conference, during the conference, and nobody listened to me. And there I would like to have experienced people having the power to override the local team, say, you cannot do this in these extreme cases. The, so that's way more than money. Respect to the fork question, uh, the fork comment you, you made, uh, one of the reasons I feel <clears throat> we have reduplication of team is that you can think of DevConf as a mini Debian that makes a release every year at a given date. So it, it, it's a different type of environment. We, we need to make decisions. So if, we have, if we were to run within the regular Debian, the bureaucracy will kill us. So one of the problems is that from the Debian side of things, it looks to me as a Debian developer that there's not really a whole lot of accountability to Debian, which is not necessarily the same thing as bureaucracy. But when I hear the DPL saying, Oh, $70,000 came out of the Debian account with SPI, and I don't know where it went. I didn't know that was going to happen. That concerns me gravely. gravely. Um, I, I, you know, and we usually find out, like, 
how the money was spent on, on DEPCONF a full year after the fact is about how long it takes to produce the final report. And, and you know, when, we, when we're saying we spent, uh, how, much, how much money did... Um, it was more than 70 because there was money in euros. Sorry, let, let me finish the question. My question is, um, did, does the amount of money that we uh, spent on DEPCONF this year did we bring in that much in donations, or is there money out of Debian funds, and how much money are we down this year? We, we got more money than we... We, we fundraised more money. Than we got uh, no, we, we didn't fundraise more money than we, than we are spending. Uh, I don't know exactly how much we have spent. I mean, the numbers... Total, we, will, we won't know the numbers until after DEFCO, but we have fundraised something like 90... even less, 90,000. And only 90,000 is what we are, we, are, we are paying for Colombia for housing, so. No, but, but you have micro, micro. No, my no. question is, are we deficit spending? Yeah. Yeah. No, we are not deficit, but. Oh. No, we, 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 we raised about 90,000, and we've taken 870,000 or more 80,000 from, from Debian funds. So we've raised this year, about a pro, as an order of magnitude, half as much as we've spent. So I have a comment on that. So this, yes, this year Debconf is in deficit. I think this is okay because we had leftover from previous year. So the, po so the, point, the point is that we, we completely used that, those leftover and those leftover were like 70K. So that, I mean, in a view of amortizing zero spending, this is kind of okay. What I don't, so what I think is the problem is the the communication about that, because, so I asked Steve at the beginning of my uh, term, okay, I'm kind of scared. That people use this kind of 70K, is that normal? And Steve said, well, usually that gains more money than what is spent, so those money will be back. And in fact, it turns out that those money will not be back. Mm -hmm. So the problem is actually understanding what actually is the, who actually is the owner of that money. Yeah, exactly. We've been through this with DevConf for a few years running. I mean, um, it's, there's always a tradition in the last couple of months before the conference of a panic of, oh, Christ, where's the money coming from? Um, and that's happened every single year I've been involved in organizations since, like, 2007. Um, we knew full well that when we came to New York that, w that we would need more funds than ever before to run DevConf, and we were hopeful of getting it. Um, okay, this year we've eaten into, eaten into the surplus from last year. Thankfully, 2009 in Extremadura, of course, with the, the local government getting very involved, we did manage to build uh, a big surplus. Um, I'm hoping, and I hope that I don't put sponsors off by saying this, that we'll end up with a big surplus again next year. Because, of course, if the local government in Bosnia are going to help support us, we're still going to be going out hitting up sponsors for as much money as we can to try and build back that surplus, say, for the year after. It's a cyclical thing. At the risk of sounding blasé, don't panic about the money too much. Um, but yes, but we could be a lot more, um, a lot clearer in terms of how, how that stuff works. So uh, another comment on that, which kind of replied to the question, why don't we have separate bank accounts? So s having separate bank accounts will actually go completely against the idea that DebConf is part of Debian and DebConf exists because of Debian. And there are two other reasons. One of the other reasons is that, so Steve in the past has given money to DebConf, and that's okay because... The, it, okay, yes, absolutely, and that is okay. But if, I mean, if there is this money uh, flow from Debian to DebConf. So either we see Debian as a sponsor of DebConf, which for me is a completely crazy and silly mm -hmm. idea, or this money should not be considered in having a zero budget conference. Because if we aim to have a zero, an amortized zero budget conference, but each year Debian gives, you know, 20K for DebConf, then it's not really a zero budget conference, an amortized way. So I think that Marga did some computation, Anna, correct me if I'm wrong, that there have been a flow of 50K from Debian to DebConf. So, I mean, if we know there is this need, it's a thing. Because when I look at Debian money, I can understand, okay, I should keep in mind that every year I should give that, amount, that, that money to DebConf. But if, if there is uh, no such, you know, 
written rule or something like that, it's kind of difficult to plan what to do with Debian money. And the final reason which, for which I'm against having a separate bank account, let's imagine the worst possible scenario. Let's imagine that all Debian servers around the world crash at the same moment. Let's imagine that we get sued for whatever reason. So at that point, I think that DebConf money should be used to, you know, as extreme measure. And if we have separate accounts, that is not possible. So, um, a, a couple of, a couple of things, um, kind of as perspective, because um, so I've been involved. I've, so I have I have no experience with DebConf or its finances or, or or how it runs. But I've been involved for several years now in the AFS and Kerberos workshop, uh, best practices workshop, which we run as a conference attached to an open source project. Uh, and I know something at least about how the finances of that work and how that's has worked historically. Um, it's a smaller conference than this one by by a fair bit, and it's only three days, but. Um, so, just, but just a few things related to that that are just kind of conference funding things to kind of put DebConf in perspective. Um, one is is that the last two years are, have been brutal for finances for running a conference. We ran, we tried really hard not to run a deficit uh, a year ago, and we ran a deficit anyway. We only didn't run a deficit this year because uh, essentially the computer science department of UIUC gave us the entire conference venue for free. Um, so. It, you're going to lose money. If you're running a conference over the long run, you lost money last, the last two years, almost certainly. Um, the second, it could, and it's just because of the global financial situation and everything else that's happened. Um, the other thing I was going to note, and, and, and the, the, the conferences do this, the, the money is very dynamic, and it, it's hard to get a grasp on the finances because there are these very large flows. There's this huge flow in and there's huge flow out, and you do have to be aware of that going in. It's just kind of how the money works. Um, but the other thing is, too, is, is that, you know, the concern about having it take a while to finalize the finances for, the, for a conference, if you're used to doing other kinds of accounting and other kinds of businesses, that looks really strange. My, our experience with the workshop, that's what happens with conferences. It's really hard to finalize a budget. It's really hard to produce a final report. It takes forever. It takes way longer than you expect it to. And so just as from an outsider, just a couple of kind of perspective things. I was just going to say on it's the on the worry, flow, I'm not yeah. on, on the flows, it definitely. I mean, although we've had this DebConf surplus building up, it has always been kind of less than the, certainly than the money that had come in from Debian before. So again, from my point of view, although it may, may, may make sense to keep some pot that you're willing for DebConf to spend from a kind of cash flow position to to get that, to get the conference going. I don't really see it as being, even though I, I want money for DebConf, I don't see it as being fair to say that this is. Debcon of money that we've built up when actually a lot of it's come from general Debian funds in the first place. Also on the, the cost for this year, yes, New York was expensive, but also somehow in the last six months or so, there was a huge increase in the costs that we actually ha had compared to what we expected before, including things like moving from, there was a, some, decision, some decision made, again, without, without certainly any um, coming back to Debian to see about spending money, um, about moving from hostel accommodation, which would have been a fraction of the price of what we were paying here, to using the dorms, which are about more than $100 for each double room a night. Um, so some things like this, it's pretty, pretty large cost increases just on the assumption that the money would come from somewhere, which is not necessarily a great, I mean, I think it, will, it has worked out this year because we had a lot of money sitting around, you can say it doesn't, we don't, there's no point to have recriminations, whatever, but is something we should look at for next for future years to make sure that this, we don't have this kind of creeping inflation in the cost. Now, basically, uh, I would like to say some numbers, but only if you are not going to only if Pablo is not going to take the number as full rising. Oh, they stay, they stay with us the number. Don't worry, just a few people in the room. <laughs> I want to I say kidding. the numbers, but I want to say that I understand that the full rising this year went wrong, and you really work very hard on that. So it's. It's not your fault or something that you fo that you were very little. Basically, this year we have raised uh, ninety-two thousand dollars from sponsors. And uh, Defcon Nine raised something like one hundred twenty dollars, plus something like forty thousand dollars in stuff we got from Junta de Extremadura. And Defcon A raised something like one hundred twenty thousand dollars. So this year we have raised very, very few money. Then so just a comment on the crisis. Last year we were already in the crisis, fear, and this kind of stuff. So is that's probably... Yeah, in a couple of years already, 
Yes, indeed. So I mean, DebConf 8 was probably not that year, no, not there yet, but 9 and 10. Uh, Oh, okay, it was already, so. So basically, last year, we found that we didn't pay some stuff, it was paid for us. That uh, explains the large surplus. So this year, uh, I said we raised 92,000, and we spent with a surplus from DEFCON 8 and DEFCON 9. DEFCON 8 was something like $600, it's not too much, but it was, it was a bit less than we said before. It was $76,000. And then I am going to say that the two biggest expenses we have, we are paying something like one thousand dollars for housing and um, food. Yeah, and then we are spending in traveling something like uh, almost uh, thirty thousand dollars. So can give you an idea of the numbers. Bla this blast first, and then John, I guess. And then I would like to say something. <laughs> yeah. Um, another problem with the financing is. Okay. Okay. Um, DebConf being held in a different uh, country every year has problems. You know, having it creates a local account in many, many times. Uh, sometimes, like last year, we used FFIS for the main. Uh, local funding and then SPI for the U.S. funding, and Debian. I mean, Debian has that somewhat, but DebConf tends to have a big chunk of funds have to go through some local currency, and that complicates the financing. Well, just a brief reply to that. So FFIS is one of the trusted organizations which have Debian money. I, to my memory, I think the only time we created a different entity was in in the UK, right? And that, that was just to reduce legal risks. Right? Okay, so I think, I, I mean, this is not a problem specific to Debcon. Debian already has account around the world, and I don't see, I mean, that's a feature, of, in my opinion. I thought we'd created one in Argentina, and no. no. We have and one Brazil. in Brazil, but the Brazilian is money is used to fund sponsoring for Brazilian developers, so the money is in Debcon, and it's just given out in Brazil. Okay. So. I, I wanted to uh, talk about the um, issue that you raised about the unexpected withdrawal from the Debian accounts, and I uh, wanted to make two points about that. One is that uh, here in the United States, it's very, very common for nonprofit organizations to have more than one checking account and bank account. And um, for, for Debian, maybe that doesn't make as much sense because of the relationship with SPI and these other organizations, but if we did find that to be advantageous at some point, there would be no reason that we couldn't pull funds from the account at whatever bank the DebCon funds are in and use them for Debian purposes because they, the accounts would still be under the name of Debian. But the other thing that I wanted to suggest was that uh, I think I, I would not see it as a negative like you do to see a separate line on some sort of balance sheet where we can say, okay, you know, here's at the bottom, here's the total amount of money that Debian has and here's some money in the that's been earmarked for DebCon for whatever, and then we can make it very explicit when we transfer money from the Debian General Fund into the DebCon Fund that that's happened, or if it goes uh, in the other direction. And uh, I think that would um, make it clear to somebody that's just looking at the balance statement that okay, we have you know $150,000, but 70,000 of it is uh, allocated for DebCon, and it's coming up in a month. That's probably going to be spent soon, and I think it would make it. Uh, fewer surprises for everybody. Um, I agree with you on that. Having more bank accounts is not the problem. That that is not the issue. The the issue is who's responsible for the money. And I think this this whole discussion now focused the last 20 minutes on money, and that is okay. that is not really the the problem. The money situation is the symptom of the problem. That, um, for example, this this decision to spend to, to um, spend mon more money here on housing in Colombia, which is nice for the attendees, creates a great atmosphere, and it's good for the, for the, um, for the one of the two goals we mentioned at the beginning, the socializing part it's, part, it's great, so we are close here together. On the other hand, there was no money to pay guards downstairs, so the video team couldn't get in here in the night to work. So we were completely overworked, and spending two or three thousand more dollars on paying guards would save the video team a lot of stress. And if, if some, there needs to be somebody 
overseeing this and making the decision, if you spend money on this, there needs to be a budget for these guards so the video team can work, for example. That, mean, that means we need the prioritization that what is Stepcon's aims and who makes sure these aims are taken off, um, are, are met. And um, I don't know what you think about the other parts Stefano and me raised in the beginning because we only talked about money. So I would like to shift the discussion. Okay, so there is uh, Phil, Steve, and, and then I'll try to, to well, move on to a different topic. Money, so. uh, well, I'm talking about something sort of related, which is uh, the sort of a month out from the conference, pretty much every year, there's a crunch point where money is being spent and funds aren't coming in yet. So you sort of hit the bucket, uh, the bottom of the bucket, uh, about a month away, just when we're deciding how many people to sponsor which is a complete disaster because they're seeing their air travel prices going up. And we need to decide that the day when we open the queues for sponsorship, that every person that gets into that queue gets the money allocated straight away, even if that means that DevConf goes bankrupt, because that is the non-optional bit of spending on DevConf. Everything else is you know, something that you can cut out of the bill, but if there's no one coming here, then there's, the rest of it's pretty pointless. And if we do it as we've done it in past years, in a way that makes sure that everybody pays twice as, twice as much for their air travel, then that's money down the toilet. So we, we need to decide some way of saying, here's a criteria. If you fulfill these criteria, you'll get paid, and, unless DevConf goes completely bankrupt. Okay, so very quickly, back to what Russ was saying about it's normal for conferences not to be able to get a final report out for a year. Um, I understand that, and that's not. I'm not saying that that's something I see as a problem. Um, I'm saying that given that this is the way things work, it's important for Debian to have a hand in overseeing things as it's ongoing. Okay, so let me try to move to uh, a related point. I agree with Olga that the money is just a symptom and not the problem. So. Let me try to see if, at least in this room, we agree on a couple of things. And then, of course, we will pose the question also to DevConf team list or whatever more appropriate list. Let's decide that we do it on the team list and not whatever. OK, so we will do that on the team list. So question for the audience here. Do we all agree that DevConf and Debian are two intimately related you know, structural project, whatever, and it is pointless to arbitrarily separate them? Is anyone against that idea? Okay. Can you just clarify so, okay. The question? so the question is, should Debian and DevConf be have the same structure? I mean, having the, I, I'm not really sure. Is, is DevConf part of Debian? I okay. Think that's that's, thanks for the right question. Is DevConf part of Debian? Do who is who, is, who agrees that DevConf is part of Debian? Raise your hands. I have a question about the <laughs> So that yes, means. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Does that mean? Oh, that okay. that one, one really great thing I've seen at DevConf is having lots of non-DDs participate in the local team and do things like website maintenance. And I'm concerned that if DevConf is truly part of Debian, OK, thanks for the laughing. I'll sit down. <laughs> but I, I, I think it's an important point to clarify that DevConf should be open as Debian should be open. And you can contribute to Debian without being a DD. And Debi we, all, we have several processes running to make Debian more open. And I always say that I came to the first two DevCons without being a DD, without having any package. I just came there because it was said, it's free to attend for everyone. That's why I'm here, because it was free to attend. So I'm very much interested to keep this, this open. But I think it must be clarified. Yeah, in fact, uh, uh, last year's DevConf and next year's DevConf are not going to be organized uh, locally by any DDs. Uh, we had no DDs in Extremadura. We have no DDs in Bosnia. So yeah. The, so would it be would it be fair to say that DevConf exists for the benefit of Debian as a project? Is it a better way to put it? Yes. Okay. So given if my first question kind of sucked, let me try with the second. Uh, do we agree that um, the the budget of the con Debian conference at DevConf should be an amortized zero budget and in principle should be able to raise enough money from sponsors for that conference in the long run? Can I, my caveat on that is that I think personally, if DevConf has a huge surplus, say, say we managed to raise 
a uh, vast amount more than we need. I don't see necessarily that money needs to stay in a, de in a DevConf pot. So, so that's I even more than my... Exactly, okay. even I would go further. I disagree, now we're in the same thing. I disagree for right. I, I disagree with what you just said. As somebody who's worked tr part time trying to help Pablo with fundraising, the idea, and, and somebody who would like to stay involved in fundraising, the idea that we, that fundraising, I believe it should be a continuing, ongoing effort, you know, and um, when you have a lot of money raised for fundraising um, for DebComp, and you're going to sponsors and telling them this is for DebComp, you know. Anna? Uh, talking with last year organize, uh, people organizing, Anto um, and Cesar, when they found out how much money we have left, what they say, oh, fantastic, you have that money for improving Debian, for Debian. They never say, you have that money for next DevCon. Maybe you, you fundraise the money thinking in DevCon only, but they fundraise the money thinking in Debian, and that changes every year. I think there are also other Debian conferences, like the mini DebConf in India, whatever, so, so we can also spend the money there. So this is actually my, my reason for doing all this, but, but the, the thing is, forgetting about the money, all we need to improve is the communication between Debian and, and DebCon. No. Well, the, this is a substantial point. So asking ourselves, is the fundraising only for DebConf or for Debian in general? This I, is a substantial I, point, she, it's she, not communication she just point. attacking me. I have fundraised every second for Debian. And I take it very, very personal she did that, and I don't like it. So I'm hoping she's going to withdraw it. But back to this thing, if you will have to come to us and say in October last year, there's 70K, you only have 20K, we'll have organized a different conference. But you cannot come and say that to us on May. We are not saying, no, 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 Pablo, no. Pablo, that's the, why we are saying that now for the future. We're not, we're not, we don't want to judge or whatever about DebConf 10. We want to lay the road for better future DebComs. Can I make Debian make project. Let me try to so organize the list. Phil, Steve, and Elliot. Can I make the point that this is almost entirely academic? Because <laughs> all, all the sponsorship money gets spent in complete, completely spent every time, just about. I mean, last year was unusual. And if you add up all the previous amounts of Debian money that's gone into DebConf and take away whatever surplus we get next year, it'll be less, the, you know, where there'll be more Debian money in DebConf than there is in... Yeah, the net flow is into DevConf from Debian, and that means that you know, there is no DevConf money. I don't really see the point of arguing about it. Well, I think that's precisely the point of arguing it is that this, we're, we're, people have been saying, okay, that's 70K that was surplus from last year. It was surplus in part because in previous years the DPL has committed Debian funds to that. So that's not, that's not the, the DebConf organization has a 70K surplus independent of Debian. It's, it's in part because Debian has, has put up, put, given money up front. In fact, I, my understanding is with some expectation that as DebConf continued to bring donations in, that some of that money would be returned to Debian. And so it's a question of this expectation that if there is excess money after the end of fundraising, is that DebConf's money or is that Debian's money? I, and I, I think wait. Wait, 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 wait. Elliot first. And then, Guna. And, and then me. And I, and I think it's very important that whatever those excess funds are, that those be Debian funds. And if, if there's an expectation from the DebConf organization that they're going to need some of that money for the next year, then that should be a trivial approval process to get the DPL, to talk to the DPL and say, hey, this, we need X amount of money. It's, it's just the problem is having two different assumptions about whose money that is in the account and how it's who's responsible for deciding it's, it's how it's spent. I just had a semantic note that I think it's very dangerous to talk about communication between Debian and DebConf <laughs> if we agree that DebConf is part of Debian. It may be better to figure out how the DebConf organization should report to the DPL and how the DP, what duties the DPL has to the DebConf organization to enable them to be successful. Just a semantic point on that. So the DPL chooses how to spend Debian money on behalf of the project. So, I mean, it's me with the sides, but in principle, the decision is kind of agreed upon within the project. Okay. And I think the other point is, who is the, the DebConf team? That is the other question. Is it everybody on the IRC channel on the list? And that is also this, this question Stefano just asked about the relationship and for the, the picture, the, the opinion in the room. Um, I would like to 
finish, this does not finish, to, to, um, to come to a decision, and we can have a decision, decision, um, discussion in this room for hours, and we can have a discussion on the mailing list for weeks. <laughs> and I, I would like to ask you, do you think making a GR is a good idea? To us, we're discussing that first, of course, what to, about what we vote, like it's, it's, it's the structures of the, the whole conference, what is, how should we formalize this organization? So let me come back to that later after Gunnar. Well, uh, I think a fundamental point to, 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 so we can see it's obvious that it's the same thing that the Vienna Dev Conference. I don't think any sponsor is interested in, in giving money for us to spend nice two weeks. Um, sponsors are giving money to make Debian better. So uh, it is uh, Debian money targeted or earmarked or whatever word you say f uh, for travel expenses for a large conference. Uh, I, would say, I was uh, talking with uh, Zach earlier. Uh, I was suggesting, uh, say, separating formally the, the funds that are marked to belong to DevConf and the funds that the project uses for other things. Just to, to keep uh, like a guarantee that we're not going to spend uh, DevConf's uh, assets on other things if, uh, I, I mean, unless completely necessary, and the opposite way, that De DevConf is not going to eat all of Debian's savings, uh, uh, I mean, uh, given it may be necessary at some point. So uh, even, even separating smaller uh, meetings, which are also necessary and are also Debian funded. Okay, so let me come back to a point make, made by Olga and at the beginning of the conversation by Steve. So beside the money, the problem is really deciding what is the, the formal relationship between Debian and DevConf. So I knew, I discovered from Olga that there is still some open delegation, AJ, to the DevConf team. So do you think that form would, is an appropriate form? Would it make sense to renew those delegation, not to all the team, because it's pointless to have 40 delegates for this kind of stuff, but what it might make sense is to have two, three person, whatever, from DevConf world, as you call team, and those people are, as it, as it usually happens, entitled to decide the procedures internal of DevConf team, and those people, we, at that point, we can decide whether they are entitled to spend a specific amount of money or, or whatever. Would it make sense to renew those delegations and to have those people in charge of taking decisions for DevConf? Do you think it's appropriate? Raise your hand if you do think it's appropriate. Do you think it's a good idea to renew the delegation? Yes. It's a good idea to renew those delegations and use and this way make, to... And make this relation something formal. Who thinks it's a good idea? Look at what's being delegated. Okay, so uh, do you have a suggestion on what could be the content of the delegation? Or do you have a suggestion on other solutions? <laughs> there should be delegation. I, I mean, okay. I, oh, I mean, sorry. Just, just a point for Steve. So Steve made the, the right point that so the decision structure of DebConf should be integrated in Debian. Yeah. But I think it's a, a red herring to think that we should all decide all together for DebConf. It's, it's impossible. Okay. Right. So we need some kind, some abstraction there. What would be the good abstraction? Um, well, I don't. One thing I don't think the DPL. I'm not even sure the DPL has the power to delegate it. But I don't think it should be delegated anyway. Is deciding to, like, withdrawals of money from from the Debian accounts. I think that should be they, that should be something that goes to the DPL for approval. Okay. And if they say I need $150,000 of Debian money. I don't care. The, the granularity of it is not the issue. It's the oversight. Um, but yes, certainly we should have delegations in place. I don't know what bits are the appropriate ones to delegate. Yeah, so one, one, one doubt I have about saying immediately to have a delegation on it is this question again about the, there's a slight danger that you perpetuate some of the, the forking question because there are some parts. So you could ask one, one thing you could ask is even if you are having a delegation to a DebConf team to organize DebConf, it's not necessarily the case that all of what DebConf team has been doing should be part of that delegation. Because, for example, allocating out travel sponsorship to people, you could perfectly well argue that there should be some general Debian decision in this. It's, it doesn't need to be the same people who are deciding what, how to arrange the housing or this kind of question. Okay, so in your opinion, what are the right bits that should be part of that delegation? 
I mean, the only way we, are, we can arrive at deciding this is seeing the opinion of the involved people and, you know, find uh, something which it, on which we can agree upon. We have no other way to do that. Do you have, uh, do you have any idea of what? I, again, I think, so, if there was, I, it, it's hard to say in, in one, one, one problem is that it's hard to know whether some of the people who are currently working in a <laughs> DebConf team are happy to switch into some merged Debian team. So, for example, I mean, logic, logically, from my point of view, it would seem to make more sense to have a Debian, whether it's a Debian fundraising or Debian conference fundraising team, it doesn't need to be specifically for just each annual DebConf, in principle. Um, however, it may be that the only way you motivate people to do it is by having this target. So it's hard to say whether, what actually works on that. I have always avoided getting involved with that part. Um. Ashish? Hi, uh, yeah. Um. I guess the thing that I'm most interested in here is how to have Holger's concerns be responded to in good time. That's, um, so I'm not sure if a delegation is relevant to that, but what's, what I like about the delegation is that it identifies a small number of people who are really responsible, who Holger, Holger can bug until they respond, and if they don't respond, he can get you. Yeah. Steve? Okay, and a couple of points. Number one on the fundraising thing is um, I'm not aware that we have a Debian fundraising team at all, we of don't. course. So, we of course, don't. the thing that has been the biggest motivation, I mean, I've been involved in DevCon fundraising now far longer than I ever wanted to be. Um, you know, two years after I said, guys, I'm not interested, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm still doing at least some of it. Um, and, of course, that's, no, that's the normal thing in Debian. You get guilt-tripped into doing stuff you don't really want to do anymore. Um, but, of course, so far we have just been fundraising for the conference. We have a target, we have a deadline. It's something that actually means that even though you don't have the time, even though you know, you're not sure that it's the right thing to do, you're phoning people, you're pestering them, you're pestering, you're pestering, and really there's lots of pestering. Um, that's point one. The second point I was gonna come on to is for a delegation, who do you delegate to? Hands up anyone here who would voluntarily take a delegation to be, de to be DebConf? Well, th there are outstanding delegations, so we need to ah, decide what to oh, do exactly. with that. The outstanding delegation, of course, is, qu is quite woolly, and that's actually possibly one of the strengths of it. Um, DebConf, possibly even more so than Debian as a whole, has a problem in that we end up with severe burnout. I mean... <laughs> Holger burns out every year, but is still here, because I guess he must enjoy it, actually. <laughs> exactly, and the best we can do is, you know, come up, hug him every year, feed him beer, applaud him, and, and you know, and comfort him when he does have, have the occasional outburst because people have been annoying him. It happens, and, dude, we love you. Um, the, the fun thing, of course, about... Thanks, but I don't want this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and, and I, I that's think, and I think, and I think there are things which can really be improved to make this less likely. And sure, and for me, that's far more important than necessarily worrying about details of a delegation of a delegation to a to a set of people. We we struggle already to get enough people to run things. We always end up with people from previous, or previous local teams end up just dragged in because, well, hey, you've done this before, you must be good at it. And, oh, go on, well, nobody else is doing it, so it still needs doing. And I said, it's the guilt trip thing, almost. Uh, Anna and then Steve. Uh, we have been talking about the delegation for the part of controlling the budget. In another side, we have been talking about the delegation for knowing who is the realist, uh, the realist team. For knowing who is the death counting. But I also want to add that the delegation will be very important for some de important decisions like when is going to be net DEFCON organized. Because I had a very I had a very bad memory of the not this last year meeting because I decided not to attend for my own sake, but from the previous two meetings from previous years, I had very bad memories. And it was one of the points where I was really, really missing not having some kind of delegation on somebody who was on charge. Because it was starting a very, very stressful meeting. Okay, who is going to chair? And the person chairing really had a lot of responsibility and was able to kind of uh, interfere in the decision. I don't, 
I don't think that micro delegations are a good thing for DEPCOM. So delegate two people run the video team to delegate two people run the budget or whatever. Just have one global delegation. I don't want to do the tons of micro delegations. Yeah, for exactly. sure. If if you and understand that, I even want to suggest that. And the other thing. Yeah, it's also the, I think that, for example, the, the decision about the, the place should, um, should be taken by more than the delegates. That the delegates should announce a team and then the decision should be taken. Steve? So, um, as I've been listening to this conversation here, I was thinking through and realizing that perhaps, uh, although originally I was thinking more along the lines of what bits do you delegate, now it's actually making more sense to me that for most of it, what you really want is not a delegation at all, because you're not delegating a particular thing. If if the DPL is, you know, if they come to, to if, if the DevConf team comes to the DPL and says, this is how money we want, and the DPL says yes or no, and then also that they pr present a budget to the DPL for approval. And that gives us all the oversight. And then how you get there is a separate matter. Um, but then, yes, what, what you really want is if you're going to delegate anything, you, you want to be delegating leadership and, and the reporting structure and not worry about the finer details because most of it is not stuff that, from Debian's perspective, that they care about, that you even, it, it's not the sort of thing that Debian normally even does by delegation. Um, so if, it, if we're just putting, put, putting a leadership structure in place for the team, if, if the team as a whole thinks that's useful, then I think that's worthwhile. So let me just check whether I understood your vision correctly. So let's say that we only have Debian money and Debconf man, Debian, the money needed to start the Debconf organization are asked for from Debian money to the DPL and all kind of financial stuff is up explicitly approved or not by the DPL and everything else is not delegated and handled independently by the Debconf team. Is that correct? But with a leadership delegation for the team. Ah, okay. With but, but in with addition, a, with a leadership delegation for the team. Okay. Wait, wait, wait for the microphone. And this is kind of the last um, in Maybe comment. Maybe not a leadership delegation, but what about official Debian representation on the global DevCon team? Like we are not well, separated. Uh, I think the point I mean, Steve was making was that we do not need that if we have explicit budget approval and a leadership delegation. Uh, the teams involved get a lot of pressure running up to the dev comp and sometimes fractures appear and uh, you've got to be really careful if you're going to delegate anything at all that you don't delegate to one or other side of that fracture because that'll turn it into a rift valley. So, Zach had okay. the good you know, idea not to del not only to delegate to existing dev comp team members but also to people who communicate Exactly. things and make things work and we're not involved in running Debcom so, so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are we're really out of time, so we need to, to close this. I'm sorry I kind of suck that managing the discussion here. So I think the only point we can make here is that we kind of acknowledge that this gray situation is, is not something particularly good and helpful in the relationship between an entity which we don't even know if it exists or not <laughs> and Debian. So the I think the only way forward is actually to after Debcom take a couple of weeks off, and then discuss early on, like in September but, or whatever. But we These must points. acknowledge it's a couple of weeks, because those weeks are sometimes like 50. Yeah, well, no, <laughs> that, that's too much. But the, the goal here is restarting this discussion on that conf team. I've tried out not to be on that list thus far, but OK, I will join the list. But I think we should really have a decision of this important key point like uh, before uh, December or something like that so that we can more quietly move next year to that sort of organization. Okay, so in October. We need, yeah, we need, at, at around the, uh, the end of the year, we need to um, decide where, where DEPCONF 12 will be. And I was okay, also think, so th that, that's a very good point. So whether to, to have this discussion not on DEPCONF team but on Debian project. I I'm think we should sure. need, you need first to... At least make pointers on both lists. I think we should well, need... You, you yeah. could say it's just, DevConf. Just, day. please. I think we need first to formalize the existing positions on DevConf team and then enlarge the discussion. Otherwise, we're not going to be... Because if you start on the Debian project, you have people which have no idea what you are talking about. But for sure, they would like to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so thank you all for attending, and thanks to the, De to the DevConf team. They've been doing an amazing job. No matter all this nitpicking we have been doing, the work this year has been amazing. So thank you for this conference.